Hello, everyone, and welcome to theCUBE's coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here in San Francisco, the Moscone Center. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, and we are start, we're kicking it off with an analyst angle where we're going to delve into all things Snowflake and Data Cloud Summit. I'm joined by Dave Vellante, who is, of course, the CEO and co-founder of theCUBE. Great and, to be working with you again. Analyst. I know, Rebecca, I've been a while. you. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And we have other guests, too. We have George Gilbert, the, an analyst here at theCUBE, and Sanjeev Mohan, principal, Sanj uh, principal at Sanjo, and a member, of course, of the Cube Collective. So, guys, this is very exciting to be here in San Francisco. Dave, I know you have sat down with uh, the, the CEO recently. This is a company that's really at an inflection point, and I'm really excited to hear all of your thoughts about this. But Dave, I want to start with you in terms of what, Snowflake being at a crossroads, trying to figure out its identity, which, which lane it's going to play in, which lanes it's going to play in. Yeah, they really truly are at a crossroads. I mean, not the least of which is a new CEO, right there, iconic CEO Frank Slootman, who took the company public and, and brought a lot of value from a, from a stock market standpoint. Uh, stepped down last year and they put in, uh, in charge Sridhar Ramaswamy, who was really a, a product driven, you know, AI-focused CEO. With Frank, a PhD, of course. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> and, and so Frank Slootman was never, you know, really hardcore product, you know, person. He was just a great manager, and so Sridhar brings this intense product focus. But, you know, why now? Well, we're in the AI era, and so, but they're also at a crossroads in terms of, you know, prior to the AI era, having everything integrated in in one stack, and and all the data inside of the Snowflake walled garden, if you, you would, was seen as a real benefit. And now, all of a sudden, the world is opening up. And you guys, we're going to talk about this, but iceberg tables and open table formats and new catalogs that, uh, that really change the, the, the locus of the value proposition, the moat, if you will, from everything's inside to now everything's open. And that's something that, you know, Snowflake is trying to figure out, we heard this, uh, uh, yesterday morning uh, that the Polaris catalog is now going to be open sourced. That's one question that George and I asked on our breaking analysis, how will Snowflake respond to the importance of metadata catalogs? We're starting to see that, but how far will they go? Will they make uh, iceberg tables a first class citizen? How will they do that? What does that mean for their moat? And that's what I'd love to get your guys' thoughts on. So, you know, just real quick, Rebecca, when you said uh, it's an inflection point for Snowflake and then uh, I forget what you said. Crossroads. Crossroads. <laughs> I, we are at Snowflake Summit, so yes, we are talking about Snowflake, but every single company is getting disrupted That's an in excellent some way. point, Sanjeev. All the way from, whether it's an organization, like you know, AWS has a new leadership, Samsung is missing out on hardware chip, they have a new leadership, so all over the world is the leadership, the processes, the product, everything is up for the grabs. Sanjeev, that is an excellent point, and that is something that, that really strikes me whenever I'm here with theCUBE, is that this, this is an industry in so much flux. I mean, it's, it's always, yeah. everything is always changing. It's tech, right. come on. Yeah. But, but right now, this moment in time, and it's really going to be about leadership. It's going to come down to yes. who does change management best. Correct. And, and you know, uh, interestingly, developers and product people are running the show now. Whether it's at the CEO level or even marketing. Like, you know, this time of like, oh, I'm a journalist, and I moved into marketing, I think those days are gone. Analysts, uh, you just name it. If you are an engineer or a product person, you are calling the shots uh, right now. So on the topic of this crossroads inflection point, there's a couple things going on that, that call for a wartime conciliary or a wartime <laughs> CEO, which is what Sridhar is. Um, which is, there's, you know, as, as Benoit, the technical founder, um, has, has always said, he, he wanted to build the iPhone, and simplicity comes from integration. But at the same time, there's this countervailing force where customers are saying, data is the asset that drives all my applications, and I need um, to be able to get at that data without going through necessarily one engine. And so, rather than the, the shall we say, the integrated wall garden um, that might have a you know, negative connotation, but that's where simplicity came from. 
Iceberg is this first step in this transition to opening up the data, but it's, this is, it's a journey, it's, you know, it's not one step, because right now, where they announced Polaris, it's basically a simple technical metadata catalog for unmanaged iceberg tables. Um, but the iceberg tables that get all the simplicity and integration of the Snowflake stack, that has, right now, outside engines can only read from those iceberg tables. And it's a small step, but we need to get to the point where any engine can read or write to those iceberg tables as first class citizens. And what we need to hear from Snowflake is, you know, what does that journey look like? That's, that's one transition. Um, and the other one is, they have this beautiful integration of all the services, streaming, analytics, machine learning, gen AI, that you can call any of those services from any of the, the other functions, so all the personas get simplicity. Um, and Databricks got a lot of credit last year for starting the journey towards orienting everything around the metadata with their Unity catalog, um, but they had mul multiple engines, so they didn't have the simplicity on the functionality side. So, you know, n no one has the best of both worlds, and um, Databricks has to try and simplify some of the services, whereas Snowflake now has to open up the data because in the Databricks land, Delta Tables was always open to any compute engine. So to Sanji's point, we are seeing like incredible disruption. So when you think about, you know, sometimes we use this term, the six data platform. So mainframes, then you had Oracle, you had EDW, uh, you had Hadoop, and then Snowflake separated compute from storage, they put everything in the cloud, made it infinitely scalable, and everything was integrated, and it's like, oh wow, we've reached nirvana. Well, guess, guess what? <laughs> They've separated compute from storage, but, they, but not any compute can access any data. And that, we're seeing a demand yeah. for that. Like we talked to a customer yeah. this morning, it's exactly what he was saying. I want to preserve that openness. I want to have the ability, he basically said he wants Android, not iPhone. But of course, the value proposition yeah. of Snowflake is is iPhone, all totally integrated. Now, historically, there's been a market for both. It's not necessarily a zero-sum game. Uh, it's, a, it's more of a blend. But this is the, the, the nature of the disruption that we're witnessing right. today. I, I really feel we are witnessing a very bipolar activity in the market. Customers are, are saying we want to have the cake and eat it too. On one hand, they want the simplicity, and Snowflake provides that amazing technology, amazing engine, but then on the other hand, they want the optionality of bringing any engine to bear. So you're seeing both these extremes. So this morning we were at breakfast and some uh, vendor, some customer, end user joined us. And so I mentioned that, well, you should be happy you get the choice now of multi-engine. And he said, yeah, that's good, but now we have too many choices. <laughs> so, Either way, you cannot win. That's so, so true. Yeah. <laughs> this is where, just briefly, Snowflake could have the best of both worlds, could give customers. How, how can they do that? If they take the metadata that's now wrapped up and connected to the engine, this unified engine, if they can make that separate from the engine so you can have both the integrated metadata that Unity, that Databricks is not quite there yet, but they started earlier with Unity, but they didn't have all the integrated engines. If Snowflake can separate and give you that integrated metadata and their unified engine, but where other engines can get to the metadata without going through the Snowflake engine, then, they're in a, then they can give customers the best of both worlds. That's what I want to see from them. What's that journey look like? Well, and I think, so we're seeing this whole new vector of, and we saw this, by the way, with ServiceNow. Remember back yes, in the day, yes. we saw ServiceNow get into the, basically become an application platform. We're seeing Snowflake do similar things that are much, much faster than ServiceNow ever did. And so to the extent that these new applications emerge, there's going to be demand for what you just described. And so that's something that's really important to watch. I mean, they've got, I think they said 2,500 applications now. In the marketplace. On, on, in, in, the, in the marketplace, yeah. on the platform. Okay, they've got to probably 10x that, you know, to really be a force in, right. in the market. But at that point, this becomes a, a real opportunity slash 
problem for them if they're not able to unify that metadata. Otherwise, we're back to stovepipes, right? Right. So. Um, and, you know, the, in any product architecture, at the core, there is a mindset of the, the creator, and that, and that mindset is the iPhone. And, you know, one of the things that, that it took a little while for Apple to do was, essentially, they didn't have a file system, so there were stovepipes, but that's what gave it its simplicity. But over time, they got to the point where you could move files between apps. And essentially, we're looking for the same thing. There's still a lot of building blocks that do not exist in this story. Like where are the gaps? Semantic layer. So right now, we don't have a good story from Snowflake about semantic layer, and you need that semantic layer. If you're going to do a natural language query to your, your data, how do you know? You're talking about apples and apples, not all kinds of fruits. So that thing is still being built. And uh, I, I, that's a problem, you know, we don't have a common standard. So what I'm, I'm seeing is catalog is no longer a moat, especially if Polaris goes open source, even though it's just a technical metadata. In my mind, the moat is functionality. It's the integrated nature of the stack. We've got structured data, unstructured data, batch, uh, streaming, you've got your multiple engines for reports, dashboards, data science, ETL, and now you've got LLMs. That to me is a moat. Same moat though. That's the same moat that Snowflake has today. Correct. I'd maybe say it this way, that, that Unity was an attempt to disrupt that moat. Right? <laughs> was, that's really yeah. what it was. And what, now we're seeing Snowflake's response, which is Polaris, because they've always had Horizon, but Horizon is the first class citizen for governance. Right, Polaris is for sort of open table formats. We'll see what the scope of that becomes over time. The market is going to ultimately decide. Well, exactly, and we know that Ramaswamy is, is doing a sort of listening tour. He's going around, talking to customers. I think he's done 100 already this year since being appointed in March. And so he is, hopefully, listening to them and, and hearing what they want, getting the feedback about where should we focus? What are you looking for? Yes, you want your cake and eat it too. <laughs> What, what, is, what is the most important thing? So I'm interested to hear from all of you who do have your finger on the pulse of, of what customers are saying, is, is what would your advice to Snowflake be? Oh, you, you well, seem like to I say will something, say George. One thing that, that we know we've heard is an issue, if Gen AI is going to be used successfully to, to interact with the data, not as a, as a call out and to you know, sentiment and parse documents, but for users, for end users, for business analysts, for data analysts, for data engineers to interact with the data. That semantic layer is critical and um, Dave and I talked to Benoit last, last week and, and he, his comment was, look, to get that right is really, really hard and you know, we're not sure, we're not sure, well, we, they didn't want to undertake it. They think it's best left to the application developer and, and if you're trying to get to iPhone simplicity, you know, that is a critical layer that is on top of his integrated engine. And, and we know from all the different products that are out there that are, that are aspire to do a BI semantic layer or even something richer with relational AI, we know it's hard. But um, my, my issue is if Snowflake doesn't address it and then a bunch of customers implement their own, they balkanize the data, and then Gen AI goes through their semantic layer, because Gen AI doesn't work without a semantic layer, so, as, as you were yeah. saying. So, you asked for advice. They're making bets, right? Where are their big bets? They're, they're investing, to your point, doubling down in the integrated platform. Correct. They're not yeah. going away from that. They're, they're betting, they're <laughs> cashing all their, pushing all their chips in. They're betting big on Gen AI. They, they basically brought a new CEO in who's an AI expert, and they're betting on developers, application development. I think the big transition, one of the big transitions here, we've talked about several, is Snowflake has relied on PLG, product-led growth, for the better part of a decade. They have to educate, to your point, um, the value of streaming and analytics and Gen AI and machine learning and data engineering in that single integrated platform 
whether it's, and, and, and have models that are industry specific and, and really focus their go to market on that value proposition and, and beat the competition in that regard. It can't, it's no longer going to be, hey, we have a better product. We get a better product, but they have to prove that it, the value is greater um, in those specific use cases, in those industries, and that's the next challenge. Yeah. And personas. And perso Thank See, you for bringing that up. Yeah. Which personas? Let's, let's yeah, list them. Yeah, so uh, developer persona was the forte for Snowflake, but now Snowflake is also going into no-code studio. Who, does, who uses no-code? The business person. Microsoft users. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, they dominate yeah, exactly. no code. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, uh, Snowflake is basically wanting to be a integrated platform for all personas, which can also be a bit dangerous, right? Because I, if you, you spread yourself too thin. They're, they're, this is the, the question I think we also asked Benoit, which was as you grow your stack and the personas yeah. you're addressing, Microsoft, as he acknowledged, you know, they've put a decade into Power Platform. It's not just Power BI, but the Power Apps, um, Power Automate, you know, Power Pages, and all those things, and now Copilot Studio, that makes a very compelling corporate developer, um, you know, persona tool chain. And then Salesforce is coming up and saying, you know, we, the, the tens if not hundreds of thousands of customers they have, we're giving them a data platform with a customer 360 and customer journey definition built in, so there's no data engineering required. That's just a bunch of low-code tools, and they with the semantics. Yes, that's the in. customer yeah. 360, and then and then they have their their own copilot builder, their own workflow builder. Those are some serious tools. So they're yeah. no longer just competing with Databricks. They're competing with the big boys. But to say, here's the thing, though. I, this is why. I, it, yes, it's risky, but I love it as an analyst, because <laughs> they could just bump along and be incremental and have a nice business. Correct. But they're not. They're saying, we're going to justify our lofty valuation and more. We're going to take it to new levels, which is, that's what you want from the next great software company. So, is Snowflake going to be the next great software company or are they just going to be, kind of give up and, so and I, be incremental? I, yeah. And I think they're going for the former, which I applaud them for. Yes, uh, and that is, that is a great move. The problem is that it's not what Snowflake does that makes a difference, it's what everybody else does. Every single company wants to own data and control data. For example, it used to be that if you were a Salesforce customer and you had all your CRM 360 data, you, but you, you missed out ERP data, which was an Oracle, SAP, and all, so you had to bring everything into Snowflake, join the tables, and then run your dashboard. Right. Now, uh, Salesforce has announced a connector for Iceberg. Today, Five Trend announced a connector for, uh, uh, for Iceberg. A few weeks ago, Confluent, which is Kafka and Flink, they announced a connector, so every single company wants to control the data under their purview so they can then manage it. So that is a threat which Snowflake does not control. And I think, so catalog becomes really important because how to access that data, you need uh, a, a, a single interface. And that's the catalog. That's the catalog. The catalog is yeah. the control point. And, and we saw that shift when Matei got up on the stage <laughs> last year at Data and AI Summit, everyone realized if the data is open, the catalog is the new source of truth. And so all those companies that you just mentioned that are supporting yeah. Iceberg, um, then the question is, whose catalog is defining Correct. and governing that data? Okay. That's the okay. owner. Okay, so maybe it's not the new moat, but maybe it's the new <laughs> on-ramp. Uh, it's almost like yeah. a browser. <laughs> you know, the yeah. moat was the operating system, yeah. but the browser was that on-ramp. So it's a very important yeah. leverage point yeah. for Databricks, for Snowflake, for the, yeah. the BI tool vendors, for, so, for so everybody. You, you know what, the question that, that uh, from everything I've seen so far, the question that keeps crossing my mind is, what are Alations, Colibras of the world thinking? Is the, is the center of gravity moving away from them? Which I, I don't think so because they're still cross uh, platform. But then uh, Snowflake has also announced data observability through Trail. So what happens to all these companies that do data usability only on Snowflake? 
They announced data quality monitoring. They have announced uh, a catalog to do row-based, uh, uh, column-based access control. So you see this, all these, uh, you know, and then uh, data ops, DevOps. So it's a very uh, shifting landscape right now with all these companies that exist in the Snowflake ecosystem. The way, the way I look at it, tell me if you guys agree, I see Snowflake as very AWS-like. They will do a certain level of, of functionality. Correct. Like access control, I mean, AWS has that. Like FinOps. And, and yeah, yeah, FinOps is it. But, but yeah. lighter weight standards and then the ecosystem builds on top of that. And then of course every now and then they go compete. You Correct. see them, AWS competes very aggressively yeah. against yeah. Snowflake, but of course they're, they're part of it. I see that as kind of the mindset of Snowflake. We'll give a layer that's a set of standards and people can build on, like a Jeremy Burton from Observe, he's going to build on top of Trail. Correct. Right, okay, but so, but, but in other observability companies are likely to do that. Right. I'm just kind of making this up, but, but, but they have to leave enough meat on the bone, I guess is what I'm saying, for the ecosystem, and then together, they, the, because the they need rising. the ecosystem, yeah, absolutely. so they're importantly. Dead, they're dead without exactly. it. Right. There's like maybe two scenarios for this build out of functionality. One is, it's the all in one. We do enough for someone who just wants to buy the Snowflake stack, but those interfaces that the, the best of breed specialist vendors, the Monte Carlos, the DBTs, this was when, when we did the interview with Molum from Relational AI and we showed how the ecosystem is splintering. It's no longer just a SQL database, it's a data platform. And so we did that you know, visual of Chuck Norris on the two Volvo trucks, yes. <laughs> ready, you know, driving apart slowly. That's what's happening to the ecosystem. They have to support observability the way Snowflake does it. They have to support observability the way Databricks does it, for example and if you want a meta observability layer, that, that's what's going to happen. So you, have, you can either be all in on Databricks or Snowflake, or if you're going to have a multi-vendor estate, the ecosystem vendors have to work much harder. It's a real challenge. That, that's the, that was the Cloudera problem during Hadoop, is they had to support everything. Yeah. And then the trucks, when the trucks separated, they you know, kind of fell. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so many big questions hanging over this conference yes. about Snowflake strategy and, and, and where things will, will, where the chips will fall, but this is going to be a great show. We have so many customers and partners and, and Bank of New York, Black, Black Entertainment Network, Snap, Coca-Cola, healthcare companies, financial services companies. I'm really excited to dig into this with yeah, you, Dave. Yeah, and coming on. Relational AI is a great, great leader and, yeah. and technologist. And uh, we're going to hear more about Cortex and Cortex adoption and see how that goes. It's just. Brave new world. It is indeed, indeed. Well, on that note, I will end here. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante, George Gilbert, and Sanjeev Mohand. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE.